first uh, drive by Tree Boy. Got a lot of good games going on. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's gonna be hard yeah. to get them on stream. It's, it's not a, a lot. It's, it's not a tough out today. Excuse me, not an easy out. Whoa. I was there and um, I was watching True Boy and um, Joe play and as it was happening, um, this happened so quick, like we just seen the gun, uh, like a, I guess he had a laser on the gun and he shot True and um, and uh, everybody just started running and I took down and um, I went towards the restroom and as I was going in the restroom, I stayed in there and I just heard there was this so many gunshots, at least 20 of them at the most. And as of that, um, I mean, for something to happen like this, it's, I'm not even from here, like I'm from Texas. I come from Texas to play. And I mean, it's just, I'm still shocked. Like, it, I can hardly talk. Everyone was just running and everybody was just dropping because they were getting shot. Right, it certainly is disturbing when you see that live web feed interrupted by the sound of gunshots. Uh, the latest information put out by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, the authority in this right now, is, as you mentioned, multiple fatalities, among them a suspect. Uh, investigators saying that they are still waiting to try to confirm if there are any other potential suspects out there, but at least for now, they can confirm, again, multiple fatalities at this tournament in Jacksonville, Florida, in the downtown area, a place that had been bustling with activity. And now, the challenge for authorities is to try to find people who had sheltered in place just a few moments ago. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office turning to their Twitter page to tell people uh, trying to get to relay a message to individuals who are seeking shelter to use their cell phones to call 911 so a SWAT team or police officers can actually get to them. Uh, they point out that they are finding many people, again, many people still hiding in locked areas at the landing. Uh, the landing, a very popular spot there in the downtown area along the banks of the St. John's River that houses a lot of stores, dining and nightlife location, and this game bar where this uh, Madden video game tournament had been happening. So this message right now has been put out there. And interesting, as you see, read the bottom of that tweet, Fred, uh, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office using that hashtag, the landing mass shooting, to relay all official information that, again, at this point, the latest headline is multiple fatalities at this uh, Florida gaming tournament mass shooting, uh, among them a suspect, Fred. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of shocking, honestly, you know, um, you know, you try to enjoy your day and go about life as positive as you can. And, you know, this kind of stuff happens every day. And you don't expect it to happen this close around you. You hear about it on the news, but you don't expect it, you know, to almost immediately influence you and happen to you. You know, it's crazy. And I feel for everybody that, you know, the victims for today. And you're hearing the numbers coming out as we're getting them as well from, from sources talking about people that actually died today. What thoughts are going through your mind about that? You know, it could have been me. It could have been any one of us that, you know, if we were there, it could have been anybody. You know, it's, it's crazy numbers. It's crazy numbers for one shooting. It's crazy.
I'm Sheriff Mike Williams, and I'm joined here tonight by uh, our Mayor Lenny Curry, our State Attorney Melissa Nelson, FBI Special Agent in charge of the Jacksonville Field Division, Charles Spencer, and our JFRD Chief Kurt Wilson. <coughs> First, let me say this. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the victims and their families who were all affected by this senseless act of violence here today. And I ask that you please pray for these families as, as they deal with this tragedy uh, in the coming days and weeks. I'd like to thank the media for joining us as we come together to provide the community with an update on information and dismiss any rumors regarding the events uh, that took place uh, earlier here today. So here's what we know. So this afternoon there was a Madden 19 tournament event at Chicago Pizza at the Jacksonville Landing. Uh, at 1.34 p.m., 911 calls came in stating that people had been shot inside the Chicago Pizza. Two minutes later, at 1.36, officers were on scene uh, at the Chicago Pizza inside the landing. Shortly thereafter, businesses in the landing went on lockdown as other patrol units worked to evacuate the area. When the SWAT and bomb teams arrived on scene, they also conducted a detailed sweep of the, of the landing. So there were three deceased individuals uh, at the scene, one of those being the suspect who took his own life. There were nine victims transported by JFRD to area hospitals. Seven of those had gunshot wounds. In addition, there were two additional gunshot victims that self-transported themselves to local hospitals. I'm happy to report that they are all in stable condition at this time. So let me recap. There were 14 total victims, 12 with gunshot wounds and 12 with other injuries that were uh, sustained during uh, fleeing from the, uh, the restaurant. So please note this number may change as we learn about the victims who may have transported themselves to area hospitals. If you are a victim and you have not heard from us, we ask that you please call us at 630-0500 to report this. The single suspect in this case is a white male and this is pending confirmation, but we believe the suspect to be 24-year-old David Katz from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, and the FBI is assisting us with that uh, leg of the investigation in Baltimore. We have located and impounded the suspect's vehicle, and a search of that is, is pending. Uh, but we believe he stayed somewhere locally last night, uh, maybe at a hotel. If anyone has any information about where he stayed last night, please call 630-0500 or email JSO Crime Tips at, at JSO Crime Shoot Tips Tax And we will be releasing more detailed information about the suspect uh, in the next couple of hours. So we know that the suspect used at least one handgun to commit this act, uh, and we are working again with our partners at ATF on that aspect of the investigation. So I'll not be discussing any uh, details pertaining to the motive at this time, uh, as that part of the investigation is still ongoing. So that, as I mentioned at an earlier news conference, there is a video. And we do have a copy of that footage. But we're asking if anyone has any additional video footage uh, to please email that, call us, 630-0500 to get that, obviously, additional information to us. So our Family Assistance Unit is up and running. So if you uh, have a loved one that you believe to be at that event and you have not heard from them, please call us again at 630-0500 uh, so we can have that information. Uh, if anyone has any information, reference to this shooting, any information at all, we're asking you that again, you please call us at 630-0500, email us at jsocrimetips at jacksheriff.org, or of course use our partners at First Coast Crime Stoppers, 1-866-845-TIPS. So I want to take a minute to thank the men and women of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office uh, and the Jacksonville Fire and Rescue uh, for their incredible response today. So we spent a lot of time training together uh, and separately for events like this. Uh, we pray obviously that it never happens, uh, but today it did and they were prepared. Uh, I also want to thank our partners, many law enforcement partners who stepped up with us today to help us work through all of the challenges that we had uh, today. So with that, I will invite uh, our mayor, uh, Lenny Curry, to say a few words. Mayor. Thank you, Sheriff. Today, this evening, and tonight, Jacksonville is mourning. We have faced an occurrence that is all too common and will require us to continue to do, to do the hard work of public safety to make sure that people are safe. One violent crime in our city is one too many. Tonight, we pray for the wounded and we pray for the families of those who are lost. 
Sheriff Williams and JSO are working with State Attorney Nelson and law enforcement professionals from local, state, and federal agencies. We thank them for quickly responding and securing our downtown. Our local fire and rescue professionals rapidly responded, running into chaos to start saving lives. Local medical personnel at several hospitals responded perfectly. At terrible times, we see the best in people. And today is no different. There are witnesses who have not hesitated to talk to law enforcement, and we need that to continue. If you have any relevant information about this incident, you should call the numbers the sheriff and his team are publicizing. Governor Scott and scores of leaders from around the state have expressed their condolences and support. To all those and anyone watching, I say this. Pray for Jacksonville as we deal with this senseless tragedy. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, with that, I'm going to have uh, Charles Spencer, who's the uh, SAC of the local FBI office, say a few words. Spencer. Thanks, Sheriff. Again, I express my profound sympathy for the victims of this tragedy and for the Jacksonville community as a whole. At this time, the FBI is providing investigative and technical assistance to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. We also are providing assistance for any investigative leads that take us outside the Jacksonville area. Currently, as stated by the Sheriff, FBI Baltimore and ATF Baltimore are assisting the, are assisting the investigation in Baltimore. The effective response to this incident highlights the strong partnerships that the FBI, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, and all the partners in the community have when responding to this incident. They, they responded quickly and efficiently. It also highlights the effectiveness of the training uh, that, we, that we do together and the exercises that we continually do to prepare for tragedies such as this. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office responds to this incident within two minutes of the first call for service is exemplary and the Sheriff should be very proud of his deputies. I just want to reiterate one, re reiterate one final time that if you have any videos, you have any information to this uh, about this incident, you need to share it with the Sheriff's Office as soon as you can. Thank you very much. Sheriff? Thanks, Chris. So, uh, tough day for us, as you can imagine, but uh, again, we, we could not have been able to get to this point investigatively where we are without our partners. So, uh, I won't name everybody because I'll forget somebody, but uh, just a tremendous response. Local, state, and federal agencies coming together, responding to help us here in Jacksonville, and we appreciate it. Um, moving forward tonight, we're going to be releasing some additional information about potential street closures uh, that, that obviously are being impacted by the investigation, uh, business closures at the landing. Uh, when, we, when we finish mapping that out, we'll release a map of what's closed. Uh, it'll be a small footprint around the landing. It will not be all of downtown. Uh, if you work near the landing, you might want to pay attention to that. If you work in other parts of downtown, uh, you'll be fine. You won't be impacted. But again, we'll get more detailed information about that out uh, later tonight. So with that, we'll be able to answer a few questions. Sheriff, sure. was he a gamer in the competition? Uh, he, he was here for the competition. Did he know the victims? I do not know the answer to that question. Can you share with us any details of the motive? Not at this point. We can't. Sheriff, what can you tell us about the victims who lost their lives? Were they gamers? Do you have any details? Have you been in contact with their family members? So we're still working uh, Vic, on all of that. So uh, even potentially uh, at this point, uh, confirmation of victim ID has not yet been done. You say if they were children or something. Sheriff, we saw robotic um, device going up, so it's just robotic. Correct. That's still, are they still searching areas right now? Uh, no, not at this point. So we have, uh, you know, not realizing the catalyst for the event. Obviously, we took all precautions, and that was one of them. Sheriff, how many people were inside when the shooting happened? So I don't have that number, but there was a large number of people inside the restaurant. Um, it wasn't full. But there were enough people in there. That, what that, was the fire sorry. marshal's capacity for that staff? So the fire marshal capacity is 238, I think I've heard. There's nowhere near that. Not even close. Sure, the number of fatalities versus the number of injuries. So the number of fatalities is three to include the suspect. And then you have a, an additional uh, nine who were injured from gunshot wounds and two that were injured again fleeing the uh, restaurants. Sure, what happened to security? Security. How much security was there? So that's, uh, I don't know. We'll have to look at that uh, down the road. And see. Sure, we haven't looked at that. So again, until we can confirm the identity of the victims, I can't answer that question, but that's something that we're working on. And once we do that, keep in mind, then we're going to have to reach out. And if they are from out of town, it's going to take some time to locate those families. Is there another so our family unification process, uh, our family assistance process, 
um, is very narrow at this point. So, so we, we kind of know what's going on. There is not another suspect in custody. There's only one suspect in this incident. Yeah, I, they were. They were close by doing some uh, elevator work, I believe. Um, may have been in this building, and uh, were able to respond respond quickly. Uh, and again, hats off to them for their tremendous response and uh, you know the courage they show uh, day in and day out, but in particular today. Do you have other video other than what we've been seeing and circulating in the media, where you kind of see the game being played and in the corner two people playing the game? Is there other video that you have access to? So uh, we won't talk about the other parts or pieces of evidence we have at this point in the investigation. <laughs> Sheriff, sure. sure. witnesses is still being questioned over at the Performing Arts Center. So we may be wrapping that up. Uh, it, we're very close to cl closing down witness and uh, you know, interviews and that type of thing. So sure. there may sure. be a few left. Sheriff, sure. will security measures increase after this? So that's a question that we will obviously dwell, delve into in the, in the coming days and weeks. And, uh, but that's something that we'll be looking at. Were there cameras inside <clears throat> this restaurant where the shooting uh, There were cameras inside. Sheriff, was a disgruntled gamer upset that he lost? That's what a lot of people are telling us here. So again, we won't confirm any of the uh, the motive at this point. It's still under investigation. Uh, so before we talk about that, we want to be sure. Can you uh, confirm that the FBI and ATF in Baltimore are searching his home right now? So we are having, uh, there is some cooperation going on in Baltimore with ATF and FBI. He shot himself, Sheriff, inside that facility, inside that venue? He did. One more question. Sheriff, was the gun legal to you have been in possession of the firearm? So that's all part of the uh, ongoing investigation that we're working uh, in conjunction with our partners. Just one firearm, as far as you know, at this point? Uh, one firearm was used. In the event. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Fox News alerted the mass shooting in Florida. Jacksonville police are reporting multiple fatalities after a shooting at a Madden 19 video game tournament at the Jacksonville Landing Mall downtown. Uh, police there are saying that one shooter is dead, but local and federal authorities are continuing to search the area for any other suspects and for any victims inside. Now, our Fox News. Houston multimedia reporter says that her friend was inside and says that he has friends who were killed. Uh, he said a gamer lost, who lost a game, yeah, went crazy and started shooting up the room. And he joins us now on the phone. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining us and tell us what you saw and what time did all of this happen? Thank you for having me. And I would say it just happened all around maybe two to three hours ago. Okay, so around 1 o'clock Eastern time. So tell us what happened. Right. What did you see in here? Uh, so personally, uh, I actually had just stepped outside to make a phone call, but I was right at the, the gaming event that it was at. Um, I saw the door, like, bust open and, like, three or four girls kind of, like, fall over themselves to get out of the establishment. And at that point, I didn't know what was going on. But I can tell by a look on their face that they weren't, like joking around or anything like that. So uh, a good friend of mine, I can kind of like recognize his voice as it was happening. I heard him start to yell, I'm hit, get help, I'm hit, get help. And he just kept repeating it. Um, at that moment, I didn't know where he was because the building was like, I feel like he was on the opposite side of the building. But with people starting to run, I just literally started to do the same. And you started to run. Did you see if there were uh, security guards who were already there who were running to where the shots were fired? No, man, there weren't security guards. However, once I started running, I, I started running to my, my car. So as I started running to my car, I can hear police sirens coming downtown in the direction they were just, like, coming full speed ahead. And uh, my phone rang, and it was a good friend of mine who was actually watching the tournament on stream so he was kind of like watching it all go down on a 20 second delay and he just called me and the second i knew that he was calling me that i knew that there was like something for real going on because he was like are you okay and i was like what just happened so he was actually able to tell me a little bit more because he was watching the stream right it was being live streamed tell me this you said that you had just stepped out to go make a phone call take me back to when you were inside of this area how many people were in there roughly was it really crowded was it standing room only give me an idea yeah yes yeah, it's, it's pretty much generally standing room only except for the competitors themselves uh this is also kind of like a, a bar as well so they have like that business part of it as well so there were plenty of seats for that and i'm sure there are people just eating lunch at the time that it all happened who had no idea of a Madden tournament at all but uh the room was probably this was the second day of the tournament and as a result of that there, were, there are people who've been eliminated already so there were about 50 people i'd say in the building 
and we will. It would have been bigger if it was the day before. It would have been in like the hundreds. Mm -hmm. And roughly, what's the age range of the people there? Yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you have to be like. 17, Six, you have to be 16, uh, 16, I know. But you were there, yeah, so I'm wondering how old did so, the yeah. people around you appear to be? That's sometimes hard to tell. I, I, would, I would say the mean age is probably around like 22, 23, but there are guys, you know, in their early 30s, and there are some teenagers there. But I would say pretty much like in the 20s is what you're looking at. Now, again, we're understanding that... Uh, Someone is, is is saying that, and we have not been able to to confirm any of this eyewitness uh, accounts. But but I'm being told that someone said that there was a gamer who lost a game and quote went crazy and started shooting up the room. What can you tell us about that? I, I really wouldn't say that he like went crazy and just started shooting up the room because I mean I've I've been doing this for quite some time and people get mad when they lose and they get irate and there's always people arguing. But the community itself is is really like together so i would really more so say that there are multiple guys who are like upset or saying that things are bs if you will and because of that like there's so much hearsay going on but i can't tell you i know that, i know the person was a gamer for sure i know that they did lose for sure and I, I don't know if they came back and i don't know if they went to get a gun i don't know if they already had it on them i, I really i really couldn't tell you that how old might this person be i would say in their 20s in their 20s so as I wrap up with you again, thank you for uh, calling us in. How are you doing? Have you spoken to any of your other friends? And I'm sorry that I, is it true that I understand that you lost some friends in this shooting? Uh, unfortunately, I did. Um, it's pretty surreal. Uh, again, a lot of friends are just calling each other to make sure everyone was okay. And I, I do know that a lot of my friends, like that room, there was no way to get out. So I was really confused because I, I was outside the building already. I was really confused how people got out, but a friend who was inside told me that when everything started happening, a lot of the guys actually, like, barricaded themselves in a very large bathroom, and they were just kind of, like, behind the stalls. So they stayed in there the entire time. There was really no way to escape where we were playing from. Like, you, you, you were pinned in there. And if you were in contact via text uh, with your friends who are still inside, let them know to call 911 as authorities are asking them to because SWAT team is on scene and they will go in there and get them if, in fact, they're still locked inside. Listen, I'm, I'm very sorry for this traumatic event to happen uh, to you. How old are you, please? Don't, uh, don't say your name. I won't say your name, but how old are you? Right. I'm 30. You're 30. Yeah, because gaming yeah. is a big deal. It, it really has no real age range. You've got adults in their 60s who love this. So I understand how important this is, uh, and it, it is to uh, our community. It's a fun pastime. But again, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for you are having to uh, witness this, experience this there at what should have been a very uh, innocent event, the Madden 19 tournament happening at the GLHF Game Bar in Jacksonville, Florida, at the Landing. Thank you for joining us uh, and sharing your, your story with us. Uh, and you, you be careful, okay, and take care. Thank you for having me, and I just hope that um, my friends are in everyone's prayers. Of course. Florida, where uh, the police say there have been multiple fatalities. For more on this, let's uh, get the latest update uh, from RT's Don Quarter. Don, thanks for uh, coming in, obviously, early uh, minutes and hours after this incident. What more do we know uh, so far, though? Well, as you said, officials have already confirmed multiple f fatalities. They've also said that um, one of these fatalities was the suspect, um, but it's still unknown if there are other suspect, the po uh, su suspects. The police are right now uh, conducting searches both for other suspects as well as civilians locked in, uh, in the complex. Uh, here's some footage of what happened. It's a lot. It's, it's going to be hard yeah. to get them on stream. It's, it's not a, a lot. Yeah, it's not a tough out today. Excuse me, not an easy out. Oh, wow. As you can see, the incident came during a video game tournament inside an entertainment complex located in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Sure, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, you mentioned that uh, entertainment complex. Shockingly, uh, we understand it's not the first time that venue's been targeted by a shooter. 
Yeah, absolutely. Another sh a similar shooting actually happened last year where a 16-year-old boy was killed and another 13-year-old boy was wounded. So we're just going to have to see how this all pans out and we'll, of course, bring the latest details as they come about. I mean, uh, the guy, um, he was a regular gamer and no, he didn't really have too many friends. Like Nobody really talked to him that much. Um, he got in an argument with one of the other gamers. It was a small argument, but right after that argument, he stood to the back for a little while and then started letting off the shots. And you said he fired into a glass window? Yeah, he, he shot like something glass because the first shot, it was like a, you hear a glass break or something. So that's why I was kind of ignored because, you know, all the games are loud and stuff and you don't really pay attention to it. But then once you heard the multiple shots back to back to back, that's when everybody was like, oh, wait, they're shooting. And that's when everybody started running. And so, Brianna, how long do you think this whole thing went on for? Um, I would say... The shooting probably lasted about a good 20, 30 minutes, maybe, or longer, maybe longer. I know it was like a lot going on, but it was, it felt like forever when I was hiding. It felt like, it felt like a really long time, but. You told me you peeked around the corner, you saw people. Who told you to hide and get down? Yeah, so when I looked over the corner to see what was going on, um, the security came and got me and they were like, go hide, go hide. So I went ahead and then um, after the shooting stopped, that's when they came back and got us and took us um, out to the building. And I saw that you made it out with a coworker who, you know, did not want to go on camera. Brianna, you're alive right now. How are you feeling? Um, I mean, I'm very thankful, very thankful, um, very, you know, shocking, traumatizing moment right now also, but just happy that I can, you know, go home to my family and I'm sorry for all the people, you know, the families that lost someone today. Brianna, did you call your family right away to let them know? Yeah, actually, I called my mom, like, while the gunshots were going on. I told her, like, they're shooting out here. I told her, I'm okay, I'm hiding right now, but they're shooting, like, and... I didn't want to scare her, but I knew that the news, I knew that she was going to see it on the news immediately. So I just called her, let her know that I'm hiding and I'm okay. Social media is reporting that this is the shooter in Jacksonville at the Madden football tournament. His real name is David Katz, but he went by the name Bread. I've looked him up on the stats and the scoring that was online and I don't see any name matching his. So I am concerned that there's some false reporting going on here. This clip is from another tournament that he played where he did not win. A lot of people are pointing this out and saying he seemed pretty upset. You know, some of these gamer guys take this really seriously. Fox News reported that it was confirmed that it was him. I have not seen any news stories confirming it yet but it is floating all over Twitter and everywhere else. A gentleman named True, his photo's coming up, but this guy here goes by the name Larry, and he has been shot in the chest three times, according to his mother. This here is True, and he is confirmed deceased. This was when David Katz, AKA Bread, won the championship a couple years ago.